Hey guys, this is Jennifer from The Shooter's Mindset. We are live with episode 372. This week, we have our co-host, Greg Cannon here. How's it going? Hey, everyone. And our guests of the hour this week are Dave Odom and Caleb Gidcomb, who won Trooper Division at the Vortex Team Sniper Challenge in uh, Macon, Missouri this past weekend. And so I snagged them at the awards ceremony and said, so Tuesday night, you now have plans. Um, so <laughs> we've got them on the show tonight. How's it going, guys? Doing well. Yeah, huh? doing Thanks good. for having us. Yeah, you bet. Thank you. Doing good. I'm sure we're all a little bit tired. We drove all night Sunday night, so I'm pretty, I'm still kind of hungover, I feel like, from not sleeping, but I know y'all are tired too because y'all uh, uh, competed and had to do all that rucking, but for anybody that's unfamiliar with you, I want y'all each to take turns and tell us a little bit about yourselves and how you got into shooting. Uh, I'm a uh, machinist by trade. Uh, own a machine shop with my wife Natasha, and we manufacture uh, firearm components. And uh, so, I had a machine background. Used to work at a uh, another job shop, and we started making. Uh, it was actually the Beaver Tail or the Grip Safety for 1911, and I had no clue about guns prior to that. I was probably 25 at the time, so 15 years ago. And <clears throat> so I couldn't have told you if it went on the front back or side of the gun. So I ended up actually buying a 1911 so that I could put that part that we were making on the gun and got into competition, shot uh, NRA uh, action pistol for quite a while, uh, shot, uh, got into USPSA, some small bore silhouette shooting with 22 rifles. And so that was pretty much my focus was all handguns for quite a while. And uh, probably up to about maybe three years ago, got into some center fire stuff. And that's kind of when I met Caleb and then went down that rabbit hole. Uh, so I really came from more of a handgun background and really none of my family's ever shot guns or anything like that. So it was just something I kind of got into. How about you, Caleb? Uh, well, uh, my parents did me well. They they bought us uh, shotguns and 22s when we were kids. So but I remember 10 years old, we would go out and shoot blackbirds on my grandparents' farm um, over in Southern Illinois. So that was always fun, but uh, never really did any long range shooting until about uh, 2015. Took a little class and um, was introduced to that. Um, met actually Ryan Hunt shortly after at a uh, uh, F-class match. And I was shooting a Ruger Scout um, 600 yards with a, oh, I think it was like a three to nine uh, scope. And uh, he's like, hey, I need to build you a rifle. And so uh, we started kind of shooting together, uh, doing that. And he built built me a rifle and, and then the rest is history. Uh, started shooting PRS type matches, most matches, uh, our local series in about 2017. And um, uh, got into kind of did well with that, had fun. And then started shooting uh, this with uh, the team matches with Dave and what, 20? 2020. 20 yeah. was our first four time. Yeah. Match. Yeah. And so uh, we started the team match deals and, and really enjoy it. So. so, how did that whole team thing come about? Like, were y'all just sitting around one day and were like, hey, we'd be good teammates. We should go shoot this match together. Or did somebody match make y'all to go? shoot a rifle match or did y'all lose a bet or like how did your team come about you know funny story his dad actually so i'd go up and eat breakfast with the old men at work well i should say old men but the experienced folks in town and so you get up there and eat breakfast with them and his dad would always be like hey my boy he does he shoots guns and likes likes pistols and this and that i'm like that's great he's like you should hang out with him i'm like Oh, I don't have time, <laughs> but I mean, like, you know, sure. That'd be great. Well, then he told me the same thing. My dad kept, you know, yawning and on about, you know, I hang out with Caleb. He likes rifles. And I was like, well, you know, so does everybody else in Dayton County. So I, was like, I don't know what you really want me to do here. So we ended up meeting each other at a, at a most match, like Caleb was saying, a club, kind of a, a local club series we have here. And, um, Wow, we shot that, shot a couple of those, and just kind of got to talking, and we got to hanging out, and kind of came fast friends, I guess, after that. So, 
we were, I had seen a um, Facebook post about the uh, Vortex team stock stuff. And I, I'd sit behind a computer all day cutting code for machines. And so it looked like a good opportunity to try and get in shape, better shape. And at the time that we signed up, I wouldn't have been able to make the reps. So told Caleb, I said, we need to go try and do this thing. And, and so he's like, well, I don't know, and kind of went on back and forth. And so we got signed up and then it was kind of, it was after that, it was kind of hooked after that. That is funny. Have y'all ever done any team matches with anybody else? Have you cheated on each other? No, no, no. <laughs> we have You know, when we started shooting this, Dave wasn't necessarily, he was the pistol guy. He shot what USPSA, USPSA, yeah, all that stuff. I, I don't even think I, I own maybe two pistols and I couldn't hit the broadside of the barn. Yeah. And I own, I don't think any rifle. Maybe, yeah. Maybe a 22 rifle. Yeah. So we, he actually shot, he taught me how to shoot pistol and he'll, he'll be mad, but I taught him how to shoot rifle. He did. Don't hold that against me, but so we we worked together actually throughout the whole process as as a team. Um, he kind of shot showed me the ropes of the pistol, and we started shooting rifle together. And since then, we we both uh, I really enjoy shooting pistol. Um, when you learn to trade, and you can you know kind of implement it somewhere else, it, it works. It's it's pretty pretty enjoyable. So, but no, I've never shot another team match with anybody. I don't think anybody would put up with. It. Yeah, We couldn't hear it. Oh, oh, we we've kind of figured out a system to put up with each other. Figured out a system and it worked. So no cheating on each other. No uh, no, no. no. <laughs> monogamous relationship, huh? That's all right. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all have a good bromance going. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it is. Probably That's probably. like Sean and Greg. You know, they yeah. don't with anybody else they have their bromance so yeah, yeah except we live in the same town yeah we do yeah so like we <laughs> Dude, just cheat quite a bit kind of yeah there's a there's a slight advantage you know there's times though you know when we're training and stuff it's like we'll shoot uh twice a week together um uh, and then there's other times i don't see them for three months yeah. so um between work and different things so uh, but it is there is a, a nice advantage of being being close, uh, you know, practicing together. I think that that is helpful to be able to even just to be around each other and be able to communicate and get the communication down. I think would help. Um, I know some partners do it over the phone, uh, just talk a lot on the phone to get the communication down. But how important do you think effective communication is for these team matches? Um, I, I know this past weekend, there were a lot of people talking about y'all like, yeah, did you see, you know, Caleb and Dave, they have really good communication. Uh, it was very evident to the ROs and the people that were watching because, you know, they all talk about like who was, you know, doing well, who was not doing well. And y'all's name definitely came up multiple times for having, you know, really good communication. So how important do you think it is? And is that something y'all had to work towards or did it just come natural? Well, I would say uh, kind of as a team over the, over the time frame, we've, we've evolved a little bit, I guess, in the sense of realizing this is a team match. So, you know, back out in North Carolina and some of these other, when you have five, two, three, five minute stages, um, you both aren't going to get to shoot. Um, or you may go to an event, our first event, um, Dave shot 19 rounds on day one. Um, and because of the scoring, it was like three, two, one, uh, compared to the last couple of years where it's been two, one, one, um, on your first and first, second, third round impacts. Um, so we've kind of realized this last couple matches, it's like, this is a team match. So we have to be able to get some one of us on target, whoever shooting first um, quickly um, with an accurate range and, and be able to engage those targets. So communication is, is, is key. Um, patience and some calmness is a little bit key too. So, Yeah, we, we do better. We, I call it, or we joke about it, it's the jazzy hands. You know, you get wound tight when the buzzer goes off. And I'm pretty bad about going into that mode. 
And so we really worked. And when you do that, the toms, you know, break apart pretty quick. So um, we had really, after North Carolina, I think North Carolina, we did really well. We had kind of gone to the next level. And so we had been talking with each other how we're going to step up and really try and work as one cohesive unit. And we watched that stage that Sean and Greg uh, shot out of the Yukon. And we, we were kind of like, that is the next level of, you know, communication, just really smooth, uh, knowing what the other one's doing, tracking what the other one's doing, almost like you're, you know, shooting the rifle right with them. So, and at the same time, trying to figure out other parts of the stage. So, uh, our stage didn't look like that out of the back of Yukon. I mean, no. I'm glad it wasn't on video. <laughs> yeah. we hit some steel but not nearly <laughs> we we had really almost fire we were still a team but we shot almost individually a little bit and, and Missouri I think we we were kind of like we scrapped a lot of that and a whole new system of focusing on each other and and, and making sure that we knew what the other one was doing so that we could you know push on and get another shooter out and start shooting so what you're saying is watching the shooter's mindset has helped you because we had that video of Sean and Greg. So tremendously, oh, yeah. tremendously. I, I, I'll tell you what, I appreciate you guys coming out to the matches because that's great, you know. And I mean, I know you're making millions, but <laughs> no, but but just being able to even listen into some of the previous podcasts about you know uh, energy, you know, with Sean and um, Greg uh, on a previous one we, we took in, and we're like, hey, you need to be eating. Um, just to keep the middle awareness and then your and then hydration and, and we you know that's obviously some common sense that you know but you don't uh, maybe prioritize it as much as you should so there's you guys have been a great help for sure yay well thank you we appreciate that <laughs> we just do it because we love it and uh but i thought that was funny that you said that the the sean and greg video i'm like hey that was our video people actually yeah. do watch sometimes <laughs> I, I mean I, I mean those guys kill it I mean, I mean, they're obviously the ones to look at and try and emulate. And, you know, and we, we don't want to copy. We have our own system as well and, and pulled from a lot of different sources. But once again, we shoot a lot together. So um, we kind of have our own style uh, that works for us, our own verbiage and stuff. But, um, those guys really have a good system down. So, you know, props to them. They've done well with it. Speaking of systems, Greg, did you have a question from the lives? <laughs> Yes. Um, so one of the advantages of kind of doing what we do is every once in a while we get to ask a question that we should know the answer to or be able to figure it out, but we get to disguise it and say like, yeah, so this person's asking, will you tell them? Me and Jen were not asking this question to each other while filming you guys shooting at all. Um, when you guys are shooting, they hear you say stuff like Charlie and Bravo when you're looking for targets. What does that mean? What's that all about? How does your coordinate system work out there? So the it's kind of code so i can't tell you actually <laughs> i just make up stuff it's it's part of my threats no, uh, so we break it up um you know there's a lot of times we actually went to one of the, the classes that vortex puts on um i think it's a great series they they um joe has um kind of went above and beyond i think and you know you show up on sign-in day well it's not only the zero you're, you're getting to visit with everybody and then they'll put on a few classes and so we went out uh year last year to the north carolina match and so they had a um, one of the instructors was talking about how they identify or be able to point out quick uh, targets quickly and so he was giving you different options you could say you can break it up in coordinates uh you could break it up in clocks angles you could play break it up in a baseball field so you know, it's kind of more or less where you need your shooter to look or start observing for a target. Um, and so, you know, obviously first base may be your um, right limit and third base is your left limit. And then you could say, you know, you might break it in infield or midfield or outfield and, you know, kind of giving you a, a direction to look and then a distance to look. And then that's the general vicinity of where that target is. So it's just a quick way to be able to get a guy and pointing it in the right general direction. That doesn't always, you know, when you have a 180 degree field of view, it's pretty tough. Um, 
and uh, there was some times that you just point the guy's head in the right direction, a rifle, whatever the case may be. So, but, yeah, our our system is just the Bravo Alpha Bravo call. That's your call voltage to indicate left and right. It's the way we grid out a field of fire when we're looking at. I kind of thought it was like a map, like, you know, not like these kids these days that don't know how to read a map, but like when you used to have to pull a piece of paper out and yeah. you look in for an area and it would say it's on B2 and you'd go across and find B and then come down to two and that's where it was. Yeah, that's it's, it's, yeah. what it was, was a grid. Yeah. yeah, yeah, battleship. I like battleship, yeah, something like that. <laughs> battleship. Yeah, battleship. So that's kind of how we find a target and then sometimes we will continue with that system or sometimes come down and land yeah. you know, you're, you're fading out a little bit there early looking tree or whatever so we kind of go back and forth uh, with how we find her and get the other one on yeah. I have um I think your microphone only likes Caleb because I can hear Caleb really good, but then when you talk, you fade out. He talks a lot. I, I talk too much. <laughs> right. Thank you. Whatever y'all just adjusted is much better. I can hear Dave better. We're closer. I'm closer. My face is bigger on the screen. I don't know where the microphone is on this thing. I mean, I don't know if it's ever played anything audio. So, so uh, we will do that. And then sometimes we may reference the previous engagement for the next target we're going to engage. Left, right, down, up. Uh, tree line, we may use features of terrain. But uh, if there's some kind of hard swing, if we're shooting on the left side, and we're going to be over on the right side, we may go back to that grid system. So we kind of flip flop that. We, we, we don't necessarily stick with one. And, be adapt depending on yeah I, I i guess it does make sense that you know there's so many different stages and unfortunately you guys don't even know what it looks like until you get up there um you know that's one of the most fun things about going out to these matches is seeing excellent communication and seeing you know we've had some stages where jen's sitting there running the binos with a camera on it trying to capture impacts and she's been there for 10 minutes looking through those things. We walk up to a stage, she'll sit there and she will memorize where every target is. She has it in her head. And then sometimes some shooters will come up and they'll talk to their partner who's at that point in time, they've only seen the stage for 30 seconds and they're transitioning around the course of fire faster than she can after being there for 10 minutes, maybe even spotting three or four different teams beforehand because their, their reference system is just that good. And then you have yeah. other teams that come up and say, it's the one next to the tree in the yeah. woods. <laughs> there is times, it is literally, there was one stage, it's like, it's in the wood. <laughs> you know, it's not on the edge of the field, but in the wood. Yep. Well, I think I remember, I think I was on there when you, ever y'all said that, you said, no, it's in the woods. It is yeah. not there. It's not on the edge. Yeah. It's yeah. funny when, the different people that um, would get up there and uh, there were some, so I would get there and watch a stage first. I'd try and find all the targets with the RO. And then I'd have to memorize like, this one's by a red Ipsic. Because if y'all got up there and said, it's by the red Ipsic, I had to know where the red Ipsic was, you know? So I had to memorize. And there were some that I'd be like trying to figure out where all the targets were. And then there's one that y'all came up to shoot. And I was like, well, I'll just see what I can do. I was able to get on every single target because y'all were calling them to each other so well. It was like, you know, do you see the deer blind? Okay, go to the right of it along the tree line. You know, even me not knowing exactly what your grid system was, I was able to find every target because y'all communicated very, very clearly, distinctly. You gave a, an identifier for each target. It wasn't, you know, the one that has a blade of grass in front of it. I mean, yeah. <laughs> they all have grass in front of them, you know? It was very clear um, how y'all communicated. And um, y'all did a lot of closed loop communication. You would say something, the other one would say, so you said this? Yep, that, you know, y'all 
communicated back and forth very, very well. So is that, has that improved for y'all greatly throughout the matches that y'all shot? Yeah, I mean, definitely. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, you probably saw Missouri was, we stepped, we, we did, we went to the next level. We've been looking, trying to figure out how to get there. So I think at Missouri, it really clicked. We, we really went into Missouri as a practice match. And so it was no pressure. It was have fun and make the rocks and make sure our score other than that, we were just out there to try and work a new thing. And going into it like that, I think we were just there wasn't any pressure on us. We were just out there having fun shooting targets. So I mean that's when you perform the best is whenever you're um, just enjoying yourself. So um, North Carolina was better than previous ones. And I think that was another good one for us this year. And uh, you know, Mammoth has always been this year at Mammoth, our first day was a train wreck, and it that's what cost us. I don't know if we would have been moving top three if day three had gone like day two uh, or day one had gone like day two and three. Um, but we kind of reset after day one and said, Well, that doesn't work. You know, what we were doing just we were hollering, screaming at each other, and, and, and upset, and basically blaming each other for everything. And, knew that that wasn't going to work and we came into day two saying well we know what doesn't work so we got to just stop doing that and uh built on that i think i think that was really our kind of a breaking point and we built on it and then uh missouri has been where we need to head for sure i think one of the ro's actually said you guys act like a married couple <laughs> <laughs> and i think we sounded like that too there's a lot of that in these matches it's really funny some of them it's funny to watch like i'm like they walk off the stage and i'm like Ooh, i don't yeah i'm gonna be speaking for a little while and even like sean and greg they'll tell you straight up at the coleman's creek match there was a stage that they were not happy with each other and they literally walked away and didn't say a word to each other and greg went and took a nap and sean went and did whatever and then they came back together after about 20 minutes. So, and all right, you ready? Yep, let's go. Next stage. And then they just, you know, trucked on and it was behind them. But it's very funny, the pressure and to watch some of the teams and how they react to it. Mm -hmm. I'm, la I'm laughing so hard because I remember talking to the RO from that stage and he's like, dude, it was so awkward. It was like when mom and dad were fighting and I just, just wanted to go hide in my room, but I couldn't. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we'll a lot. We always do a debrief after every stage, and so on those stages where it's just like total mess, we were just sitting there red in the face, basically screaming at each other. And I stay calm and collected. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, we can laugh about it now. I tell you, day one in Mammoth was rough, 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 and so it's pretty much every stage was that way, and it was. It was kind of like Caleb's like, why didn't you tell me this? I was like, why are you doing this? And so, um, but I think we really got, we pushed through that. And so I, you got to have those moments though and um, be able to uh, look look at that and build off of that, knowing that that's not where you want to go. Yeah. And I think being able to, you know, talk about it like grown ups and like a, a, an actual team after it happens you know every, everybody gets those points but just being able to be like all right so let's move on you know this is what happens this is what we got to learn um yeah so generally when you guys shoot i know this is a really corny saying um but the best words to describe it is cool as a cucumber like um i actually caught one of y'all's stage debriefs as you guys were walking away um walking back up after a stage and you're like, oh, you know, we got reckless, we got rushed, we got in a hurry. And I'm like, that's rushed and hurried? Yeah. <laughs> because you guys still, even at that, just looked as, you know, as held together as can be. Like, um, how, how do you guys manage to, to stay that calm and collected no matter what's going on? I think the, the quote of the weekend we got from you guys is um, – how much time do I have left? 
four seconds. <laughs> just, just so he cool. said it just like that too. It was like Caleb said, "How much time do I have?" And Dave goes, four seconds." <laughs> yeah, hey, that's enough time to break a shot. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah, you know, you really just have to, if you don't see a target, that's usually when you pass, you know, so you get up there, start looking for targets, and then, you know, you don't see anything, so you're like, doggone it, time's burning, time's burning, and so it's it's kind of like the same thing as having a malfunction, you know, you just, if you just relax, drop your bag, and, you know, put another one in, you know, uh, drop that out of the chamber, whatever the case may be, and then and insert your bag again, you'll move on and you'll be able to do just fine. But uh, so that's kind of the key is just be like, man, if I don't see a target, I don't see a target. Uh, keep looking, move on. And if you have time, engage it. Uh, so you can't hit what you don't see. So uh, both of the other times when I was on the rifle on one, the last one of the stage on the hilltop that um, we got to the end, we had 30 seconds left. Well, we couldn't find my last target. So about five seconds left, pan left, and uh, there the target was. Mm-hmm. So um, you know, you just kind of just wait till you, you till you find it, and then once you get it, have a game plan. Yeah, I think being on, you can find the target much easier. When you get stressed out, you look over them uh, pretty quickly, and that was there was one stage in particular uh, was uh, under the wire. And I think we kind of started off that a little bad because we had the stage brief. And um, at all minutes, Caleb was right on the stage brief. Uh, we were supposed to crawl to the position. And I thought we just had to go under the wire. So, uh, nonetheless, uh, we had some argument going into it a little bit. And then we got up there, and I I saw one target. And then I, I was just kind of starting to get panicky. And I could feel it coming on. And then I think it fed into Caleb. And he was trying to feed me targets. I got on four. And I saw a fifth target. It was a diamond, but it was for another stage. And I shot at it three times. Of course, it was the wrong range because Caleb gave me the correct range for the target I was supposed to be shooting at. And so I was like, missed that one. Couldn't find my sixth target. And so I was like, let's just switch over. And then I gave Caleb a bad wind call on his target and so it just seemed like it was unraveling and kind of like a snowball effect um and i you know we shot okay on the stage but it wasn't a substantial by any means not what we had been shooting that uh, match so far and so we came off of that stage and we i don't even know if we, did we even really do we were just we both kind of like i think that's one thing we talked walk back and yeah we were, were just like, kind of oh, like that was, a, that was just horrible and so then we really didn't even, we kind of were getting ready for the next stage. And I came up to him, I was like, I don't know what that was, but, you know, it wasn't right. And we need to get that out of our system and not do that. And so then our last stage of the day, I mean, it was a burn down. We killed it on the last one. So it was nice being able to just reset and get that and recognize that that's not where we needed to be at. You just, you start getting in that mindset and it, it takes off and you can't find targets and then you start missing stuff and you make bad calls and uh, then you're upset with each other again. So um, it's a, it's a delicate balance for sure. We do have a good stage that y'all had very good communication on. I think Greg is getting that pulled up. Yep. We'll show that one. I think it was actually y'all's first stage. Oh yeah. Oh, the little truck. You guys see that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. This was a good one. I, there was one target. That was one critique I had of that. Was my third target, maybe. Pistol went pretty good. We only dropped a couple there. So here you guys had to draw a card and that card would tell you the uh, order that you had to engage all these targets in, right? Yeah, so they have a circle. Shot, wind, and spin. 
and each card was a different order that you'd have to do to So we drew a queen, and then we, so they showed us the queen, Caleb shot first, primary, and then secondary was supposed to shoot, and we confirmed that we were supposed to shoot queen again with we were, so we both shot the queen. And then the plan, I was going to go in and start uh, shoot the secondary targets first, so I was just getting that, that pad was the easy go-to item there. Uh, Problem with it was the bag was just all steel, so the tripod kind of skittered it. Okay, got a diamond for you. Didn't really dig in. Three, Charlie. Yeah. Three lines. I was, I could keep the vertical on the plate the entire time, but no, Caleb's targets were skinnier and further away. I always get the easy targets. <laughs> you remind me though that oh, I didn't miss any. I'm like you didn't shoot fast. Those big targets don't move. So, yeah, one is uh, just actually Caleb, my wind guy. He always kills it. Okay, got the second target. Three. Yeah, I just started. Char yeah, uh, three. Charlie. Uh, uh, excuse me. Bravo. Come down. Down and left. Three. Bravo. That's a t oh, base of the hill. Yeah. So he gave me a call for a direction I've to got go. Three ninety five. Okay. Got it. Okay. Spotted Found it. I've wind. seen another Ipsic down there. Three ninety five. Base of hill. There was targets from other uh, other stages. You were seeing, so you had to be able to decipher between those targets and these targets. So it kind of would draw your attention off of uh, Pan left, with off of uh, your target you're looking Pan for. Left, but it field, also helped eh? for, you know, I used the that sniper head as a reference, I believe, on this next target. Right? Yeah. Uh, left of the sniper head. Yeah, there was there was all sorts of stuff out there. I looked through the glass. Four oh two at that just left of that previous yeah. engagement. So this one was like it gave me a rain. Oh wait 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 wait. And then I was that is the turret. Hold on, diamond. Okay, why did I miss? Ipsic and a sniper head, short of a sniper head. A correct and left of sniper head. Yeah, I got it. I just bro I broke off left. But he wasn't. Okay. And so then shot again, and I like. <laughs> no, no. It's okay. And I think I aimed a little higher. You're off. Left. I was shooting all around and I'm not really even hey, sure what left, tree line. Two Charlie. But I didn't bring my partner. Alpha here. Uh, right yeah, that would be great. <laughs> yeah, 293. Yeah. Spotter. Yeah. 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 Change the mag. Okay. 427 on the clock. I got you another target too. Okay. I like that. So you told him you were changing bags, so he knew what was going on. Yeah. He, yeah. You, he has your next target, so you don't need to start scanning as soon as you come off. Yeah. On that tree line. I got, yes, got it. Range. 270, um, one, uh, 276, 276 tree line. Got it, Butter. Send another three. They got it. Making sure the spotter knows that what target we're on and make sure we're getting our Communicating with this. Pan left, pan left, tree line. And this should Got be my it. line. Left, 271. Yeah, and that, it was like really awkward. I had to put my knee up on it. So it was a little sketchy. Yeah, so, okay, I'm getting ready because we are going to do it. Time out. Try right. not to move uh, the truck. Yeah, we that, you moved in there. Left the tree line here. Yeah, um, yep, that's not okay. like the other stage on the five ton where you could probably do jumping jacks. And <laughs> yeah, 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 I don't like that. Okay, just right about the yeah, yeah, center line of that First tree stage line. of the day, the <laughs> gun rolls off the front of the truck. I'm like, that's not good. Move that, Jack. Yeah. So oh, you probably already found yeah, your first target. Straight, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, so I had already had several of my targets found, but I was going to let him lead on uh, ranges. But I just took the closest oh, one that I found. Good, already yeah. had the distance, um, put down and started engaging. And then he uh, started walking me on target. 500. 500. Oh, yeah. Right up to that next tree line. Okay. Butter up. Butter up. Give him his range. 
you'll you'll notice that that tripod at, at some point I thought the front leg was starting to flap. Two minutes, you got time if you need to reposition. You just skate around on that metal platform, you know, the bed of that truck. Add a tenth left. I didn't get up there, but that platform was pretty slick. Yeah. Do you know, in all reality, that would be when those, uh, the rubber feet would be real light. <laughs> yeah. 523? 523, sorry. 523. <laughs> That cracked me up. I'm laughing because you said 223 and I thought. What are you talking about? He goes, you mean 523? <laughs> well, I don't. I, I actually started painting. I'm like, I right see right the target right there. Five, yeah. Minute 30. I'm glad I wasn't the only one to see this. Right? <laughs> Off the uh, I had two tenths left. That was just me. Yeah, it's a little poke, you know, you get those One shadows in those seven, uh, tree lines and stuff like that, and that makes it uh, a little more sporty. Right from your sure. last engagement along the tree line. It's hard to ju judge three, the width of that target, five, and then plus two, being, uh, it being slick. By himself, yep. Keep that same yeah, look at the wiggle of that right there. What was it? 500? 502. Yes, 500. 46 seconds. So I'm just giving it And there he's at. As a little, he said 46 seconds. I probably should have shot a little bit faster, but I actually got off on my targets. Um, I thought I only had one left to engage, and I actually had another one. Yeah. So that was a debrief of like I screwed up there. Should have got a little faster. Right, just over the little Cress's Hill. He's in the, he's kind of in just the middle of the field, 400 yards, just to the left and below a diamond. Okay, what's the yardage? 400. Time. Four seconds. There's four seconds. That's right. Four <laughs> seconds. Four seconds. Four seconds. Four seconds. I thought it was good. I mean, y'all even down to there's one shot I think he missed, and you said you were nicely saying like, "Get behind your gun," because you were like, "You have plenty of time if you need to reposition." Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I looked over it. I was like, "Yeah." I mean, that I just kept doing the tripod, catering around on top of the door. Can't slam it into the corner or something. I it was just difficult. Back to it. So it was bed rail may have been a better option, but the top of the Let's see. We are at the midpoint of the show. Greg, do your midpoint spiel. <laughs> and I thought you were gonna read it. You got the you got the first sentence. Keep it up. I always make you do it. Go. <laughs> Remember, if you're watching live on Facebook, ask any questions you may have to the guys in the comment section of the video, um, and we'll, we might ask it live on air. Other ways to catch us, you can always check back on the TSM Facebook page. Um, they stay up here forever. Um, we usually upload all the podcasts, podcasts, podcasts the night after the show, so you can take us on the road with you or to work. Then finally, everything eventually ends up on the YouTube page as well. So if you're looking back for a historic episode or something from the past or just want to sit there and, you know, listen to us hours and hours and hours on end, um, go check us out there. <laughs> so how do you guys train for these team matches? Do y'all shoot together a lot in practice or do you just do you work on communication? Did you take classes together? He's taken a lot of my classes. And it's 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 shown. Yeah, right now one on one. Yeah, you know <laughs> we uh, we do a lot of strategizing, um, and I've, I I'm my background is aviation, and so I always kind of like if it doesn't kill you, you better learn from it type of deal, and so I love kind of learning from other people's experience. So I, I'm always talking to, you know, some of the guys that we've shot with like uh, Dorgan and Sky and. Uh, Sean and Greg, you watch those guys, Scott and Brandon. Um, you just uh, pick up things from them. Um, 
little bits. And uh, so we, we strategize in that way and then kind of have a game plan for being able to, you know, execute the matches. That's a lot of experience. And so our training, we bring that into our training and we'll go out and shoot and we'll just set up random stages. Um, and I'll be like, all right, it's your turn. So we may, we'll have targets out there and we'll shoot pistol. Um, you know, it's going to be a hundred yards, three shots, you know, 50 yard circle. And then, um, the right, you know, the right circle, and then we'll break it up into patterns. Um, and then we'll go out and we'll maybe have to call each other's targets out, um, uh, two shots each, mm-hmm. um, total of usually for, for money or for reloading sake and time. Uh, we just shoot a couple shots at each one and then we'll kind of break down the stages that way as we're prepping. But yeah. then a lot of walking. Yeah, we'll do we'll do like coming up to a match, we'll practice two times a week and we do we'll do probably three to four stages uh, and then rough. So we always shoot and rough. And we typically rough with full kit. Uh, we may be a little light uh, right up until like the week five and then we'll do a But uh, I shoot probably one to two matches a month, and then I practice one to two times a week at least. I shoot a lot of rim fire. I shoot my rim fire as well. I typically just shoot the same guns. I don't really mix that up too much. I shoot my nine millimeter pistol. I bring that's that's the gun. That's the only pistol I ever shoot anymore. And then same with my two twenty three, and uh, I've got a Voodoo twenty two that I shoot quite a bit. Um, we go, uh, I shoot 22 matches, local series here, surefire matches, CRF style, and um, that just keeps up marksmanship. But uh, Caleb and I, you know, our families, our wives get along, our kids all play together. So it's usually uh, we go shoot, practice, and we'll have dinner, hang out. And so it's kind of just a, you know, an afternoon type setup. That's awesome. Now I can't hear you, Greg. Why can't you hear me? Oh, now I can. Huh. You got a funny story? No, oh, well, a funny story for us? Oh, well, I tell you, at one time, well, our first um, our first match was Vortex uh, Sniper Challenge as a team match. So we're all worried about our ruck weights, and we're like, I don't even know if we can make it, you know, 30 miles through the hills with like a 35-pound pack. And, and, and you guys know that 35 pounds most of our packs weigh 60 now but um so we were like way over worried about it anyway so we go out there with a one set of binos that were 15 power so if you're a new shooter don't bring a set of 15 power you, to a match. 15. <laughs> you will find no targets hardly because the magnification so much it's like looking through uh you know a tube so um so we were leave and oh, and one rangefinder, a handheld rangefinder, a monocular. <laughs> As we're pulling out of the driveway, I'm like, "Hey, Dave, my dad just bought a brand new pair of Swaros, the EL, EL, yeah, uh, range, ten power range. Yeah, I'm like, we should just borrow them and bring them just in case we want to use them. No, no, we we're like, no, that's too much weight. That's too much weight. We're just gonna go. We'll be fine. Yeah, bad call." So, so we didn't have any way to hold the binos. Oh, we, no. We, we fashioned together. So that we, I didn't hear anything you just said. Yeah, I can't hear you, Dave. All of a sudden, you're quiet again. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. Okay. We had uh, we didn't have a, a any kind of way of holding the binos or keeping track of them during the staging. So we fashioned together a paracord neck strap. Uh, for the binos so they were kind of flopping around our neck the entire time we were going through all the stages um it did hold together oh yeah we made it through but uh and somehow we managed a first place in trooper for our very first match. i'm not even sure how we did that with the, with the it was a six power i still have it it's my backup to the backup to the backup now a six power yeah. leopold monocular range fighter and that's how we ranged all the targets. So um, now we bring five range finders. Now we have five range finders. <laughs> <laughs> so that kind of brings us right into a live question that Austin just asked. Um, he's asking about your equipment. 
um, specifically the unit on top of your scopes, but he's curious also about what cartridges you shoot, how much your rifles weigh. Um, I want to know why one of the guns is, is backwards and the, the cases come out one side and the handle's on the other side. Well, that's normal, right? No, so that's, that's gaming. Uh, that's no. gaming. So um, that was one of the right hunts long range. Uh, Ryan, uh, that's a TL3. It's a right bolt left, uh, left one. And so we, I, I, I don't know, I guess it's common in bench rest, but it's pretty handy because as you're shooting, um, you're able to see if you have a misfeed or if you have, um, you can see what's going on. Um, you can see if something injected properly or, you know, a case got kicked back in. Um, and so it's right there visible to you. Um, so actually that, uh, I've shot that same barrel on like three different actions. And so I love my TL3 um, that I've been running that right bolt left for. I used to run it in PRS. And so I've taken that gun and um, like I said, it's been on three different actions, actually in the last three different matches we've shot. But um, so that's why we have that right bolt left port. And, uh, and then for the uh, rifle, what we've done is we've just more or less, we've, we started off kind of trying to go ultra lightweight. Um, I, and I say that they were still 12, 13 pound rifles. Um, and then we went back to more of a, a little bit of a heavier rifle, a medium weight rifle, um, just for being able to manage that recoil and, and just for comfort. Yeah, you're, you're 16 pounds. Yeah. And I'm probably around 15, 15 and a half. Still, still shooting a six bash or a lot of recoil. Yeah. You know, so it's hard on your shoulder. And I can I'm imagine. 223. And, and so for a lot of these matches, you've got to shoot some kind of, you know, NATO round. It's got to be a 220, the secondary does. So it's got to be a 223 or a 308. And uh, 308, the ammunition's like two and a half times heavier. And uh, 223 with the, the heavy bullets out of a bolt gun, you can, uh, you know, you can best the drop and the, and the wind than a, three, a 308. So a 223 is really the gun to shoot. I mean, you can spot impacts better. It's so between those two cartridges for this game. But uh, we're both running carbon barrels. I'm running the Curtis with all the standard right bolt, right eject. And uh, we had been both running stocks. I'm running the Manners, but Dale went back to his MPA chassis. He's a chassis man. I, 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 I can get behind that. I'm a fan of chassis. Yeah. <laughs> I really yeah. like it, maneuverability. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, it's easy. There's a lot of places to grab. Um, you're getting in and out of cars or climbing in. You can see we're climbing the back of trucks. Or, and, you know, you're running up to a stage. And so you can get a good grip on 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 the chassis, in my opinion, over a small one. So yeah. That's always what I've shot. Yeah. Too, so I tried. I've shot gray bows and manners and different ones, but I like the I like that MPA. Yeah. Well. And I've just ran manners, so that's what's on my 22 rifle. It's on a lot of my other rifles, so I'm used to it. So just keep shooting the same thing. Uh, the the uh, piece of equipment device on top is a, a Wilcox Raptor, and it's a, a ranging device that spits out not only range, but also ballistics. You can also uh, input wind into it, so it can give you wind hold. Uh, we actually use them quite a bit in the past, but at Missouri, there was one, well, I checked two targets that, once again, I thought Caleb was telling me a fib on the range, so I checked them, and he was right on both of them, and so it was just me not hitting the target. And then there was one stage that Caleb used the wrap on. But other than that, we kind of have stopped using them. We, there's certain instances when they do come in handy, for sure. But um, for the most part, they're, they're just up there. Extra we pound put, away. Yeah, it's an extra pound. We put them on there, and we, they turn, we turn them on when we go to the stage. So that If you need it in a pinch, it's nice, but it, hey, it's, a, it's longer to use it than it is to have your, your partner just guide you on and give you a range. That makes sense. They're, uh, they seem like a very nifty device to have, but also, yeah, it's so much nicer to just have someone say, dial that knob too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
you gotta you gotta balance the weight and the advantage of the equipment oh yeah 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 you know yeah so yeah and you know it does limit you too sometimes it doesn't work keep it very south at the five area um and you, you know you, you may not even be able to use the, the range finding device um through that area because it's just it, you know you've got to put your rifle and your scope and then you're you know the raptors up even higher above it so there's a lot of you know discrepancies there um and then it has the same limitations as a rangefinder, um where it'll pick up uh debris in front of the target um as well like tree branches and different things so it'll give you a false range a as well yeah. we we train with them quite a bit just to make sure that we know what they can and can't do but, but you know, it was the only kind of clean stuff while we're doing things. We we both are running binos now. We usually just brought one pair, but now we both have them. And so we really don't have to try and switch them back and forth. It's just you do your binos, I do my binos, and, and we can give each other ranges a lot faster that way. So that was loud. I don't know what that was. Uh, it's like feedback or something right at me. So what was your favorite stage this past weekend? Can you tell us about it? Well, mine was definitely, uh, it was, got it written down. yeah, I had it, written down. it was in my notes, my extensive notes. Uh, you go high, I go low. It was the it was stage number 12. It was the last stage of the match for us. And I enjoyed it the most. Um, it was really fast paced. Uh, we did really well at it. Uh, we had a really, it was the one we came, we had come off of the, the under the wire stage where we weren't super happy about. We kind of figured out those issues, came into this stage, had a really good game plan. We both kind of worked the plan and I think we executed it exactly how we figured it was going to happen. Caleb went up on top of power and I was underneath the tower shooting through a window. It's a pretty small window. And we had came up with the plan that he would go up on top and he would just use the Raptor and start, because his targets was fairly open field. Uh, so he would be able to go through, find his targets, just shoot the Raptor, hold over and start going on targets. And while he was doing that, I was down below, found all my targets with my binos, and I wrote them on my arm board, all the ranges and locations. And then I, we were kind of talking back and forth. I was, I was counting how many targets he had engaged while I was going through mine. So I kind of knew where he was at in his order. Um, I gave him a heads up at two minutes that we were getting close on time as a five minute stage. Um, he had engaged four at that time, and he told me he had a fifth one that he was about to engage. So that's perfect. I'm getting my gun ready. So he started shooting his fifth target. I threw my gun up in the window and had my reticle on the very first target, dope dialed, uh, magazine in hand, like inches from the magwell, just ready to go to town. He told me, mag out. So I had a minute 30. And then I ran uh, five targets with three shots each, got it clean. So I, I got to my third target, which was 500 something yards out. Caleb was tracking me through all, I was calling my targets. He was tracking me. He gave me a wind call, hit me up on the plate. So it just, we were really, really jiving on that one. And that was a lot of fun. We were, he gave me a wind call. He said, that was good. Then he, he said, back it off for your next target. And so we worked through it like that. And he was able to keep me on the plate. So I didn't have to think about any of that. All I had to think about was just down my dope, hold the wind he's telling me to do, and I knew it was going to hit the target. So um, that, that, was a lot, that was my favorite, for sure. Because I, I feel like we like kind of beat, beat the demon and, and, uh, and push forward and, and finish the match strong. Man, that is awesome. So we, we hung out on that stage for a while, and that was a really cool stage, but I kind of wish we would have got to see you guys there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was – I just wish you guys would have got done video. I mean, you know, yeah. when you do well, it's like that oh, would, video that stage. That would have been the one to say, yeah, because I think Caleb dropped one, right, like yeah. a second round maybe or something. No, I, I cleaned it 
um, I didn't, I, oh no, that's, I did take it back. My um, fourth sniper had it 700 yards and I missed off the net. Um, yeah. But yeah, we pretty well cleaned so, that. So I mean, we, yeah, we missed, sh- I missed one target. I didn't engage the last target. Mm-hmm. So we shot like, we shot 30 rounds and hit 29 of them. So I was just like, I mean, yeah, what, how else can you do it? I mean, we didn't get to our six targets, either of our six targets. We shot like, it was like 80 something percent. With you're coming off the line and you shoot at 60 percent, you're feeling pretty good. Up on it, so. Yeah, I'd say, yeah, my favorite stage, I really liked how they mixed it up. So, you know, where you shoot mammoth with this vortex sniper challenge, they the stages have been changing. And so, the new dynamic it seemed like this time was, um, um, I don't know, remember the stage name, but uh, oh, there you go, notes. Day two, uh, I don't even know. Banks closed, Grassy Knoll. Which one's the one that I lost my Mac? Oh, uh, that was Grassy. No, that wasn't Grassy Knoll. That was um, that was number the six. The last uh, stage on day have, one, pistol rifle. It was the pallet. The pallet stage. Okay. The pallet stage. So the pallet stage. So what they mixed up on that was uh, you shot rifle first, and then you actually moved to the uh, – Pistol, pistol yeah. and then um, and then you actually moved in back to the rifle, and so that was kind of a unique deal, and it added an element of stress to it, and so we were able to walk steel out uh, 950 um, in some on, stiff wind. Yeah, on like, some, <laughs> yeah, late <laughs> night, two mills, yeah. or, you know, late in the evening, two mills, and and, and it's, it's just kind of raining some steel, so that's always fun. I was able to. Uh, as we were doing that, me and Dave both planned we're like, listen, don't forget my mag. <laughs> well, I said I was going to grab the mag. Yeah. That was that was my job. Grab the mag. Grab the mag. <laughs> and so, like, you know, as soon as I get done shooting, I'm like, I was already excited. We hit some steel, you know. Yeah. Like, actually, I cleaned it. Did I, I cleaned it, I believe. I think you did. Clean it. So, was just, it was very impressive. It oh, was yeah. Like six I was impressed, and I, I just was like, I, you know, I send it, and I'm like, yep, that worked, so let's send it again. Yeah. But uh, I get up, and I, Dave's like, he's gone. I'm yeah. like, dude, like, we're moving as a team, you know. I, bar- I about left my bag, but I did leave both of my mags. Yeah. And yeah. so at the end of the stage, you know, we go shoot pistol. We shot go get on some. Pretty good. Yeah, so it's Dave awesome. shot pistol, and we found most of our targets over yeah. there. And then the RO comes up, and he goes, Hey, you guys did really well. Top score. That's great. But bad news. And I'm like, oh crap, what yeah. disqualified? Yeah. You know, what a, something. We're gonna go home. He's like, I got your mags. And I'm like, all right, I'll yeah. see you Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, we come up there. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't hear you just hear said. Dave at all. Yeah. <laughs> I swear, the, I think the microphone just hates you. Like, I, I heard your side. What about if I talk over here? Yeah, that works. Okay, I'll Ooh. talk in this direction. That's what I feel like I've been doing. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Well, I, I felt bad. Coming three off. Charlie. Three, three <laughs> Charlie. Talk in that direction. <laughs> 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 we, uh, I felt bad. And I had to hang my head pretty low coming off of there and telling Caleb like that was my fault for not getting your max. But he did he did shoot really well. You had other mags, I assume. I did bring some extra mags. But, you know, that's not always that common. If I was in Lurp, you know, that's a the deal. I'm like, well, sure, I'm glad I was in Trooper because I had some extra mags at the hotel. I always I did bring a, I usually bring an extra mag um, if we're having mag, you know, in case I have mag issues or or you you know you have something like that where you you drop on and it's gone. I mean it, you don't get it back till till after the match. So talking about the different divisions, um, y'all have shot different divisions. You've done LERP. I know I've seen you do LERP and I've seen you do Trooper. Um, there's actually three for anybody that's watching and doesn't know the divisions. Mechanized, they get a driver in a van the whole weekend. Uh, Trooper, they ruck between the stages and out and back and, and do all the miles that they do, but they can go back to the hotel at night. They can shower, they can sleep in a bed, they can restock their ammo and food. Um, and then LERP is where they are 
camping, they step off on Friday and they have to have their gear for the whole weekend, right? All their food, all their sleeping gear, all the ammo, everything. You don't get to go back to your car and refill anything. So um, those are the three divisions and y'all have shot two of them. Um, why did you change up what you're shooting and which is your favorite? Well, this, we shot um, Mammoth, which was like a LERP division where you, you camp. And then we shot Vortex in North Carolina. And we shot, you know, you had to camp there too. So we were fortunate enough to win um, first at North Carolina in, in our division. And LERP. And LERP. So we thought, well, we're going to use, we already made the finale. We're going to use Trooper um, as a, a backup if we want. So we're going to go and practice, make the rucks. Um, and, but not have to sleep in a tent and so uh, and eat bag meals so uh what the bag meals aren't bad no they're not but steak's better <laughs> for sure steak is bad uh, steak and shrimp steak and shrimp yeah that was, there, there was uh, some we did bring, we did rub it into the lurk guys you know um so we just did it that way um just kind of mix it up and so now we're qualified in two for the finale so we can i guess uh, as joe was saying we could actually choose which division we want to shoot at at the finale so it gives us options yeah i was going to shoot well, the next match and just make it in on all three <laughs> i would love to i don't know if we'll be able to on, on time wise no it would, it would be really cool to go shoot colorado because we've shot east we've shot central and and the west is a lot of fun to go shoot out there so um but yeah it, it would be cool to do mech but me personally, I like LERP. It's the challenge. It's, you know, you're mentally exhausted. You're physically exhausted. Um, it's, it's tough. And so I think uh, it kind of proves uh, to yourself almost uh, as an all-around shooter and just able to make it through the um, adversity. But hey, LERP, what's your favorite, LERP or Trooper? Uh, we like to do – I mean – LERP brings a whole new uh, challenge. To it. Um, you don't, you know, you know, kudos to the military guys that are along, you know, our, our military that they go out and, you know, you don't take shower for three, to, you know, three weeks or, and you eat bag meals, MREs and stuff like that because, and to stay um, focused and alert because three days, even, I mean, three days match and you're sleeping two nights in a, in a tent. I mean, it, it wears you down. Um, and it, um, like I said, you just you're eating bag meals, and um, so it, it's a new challenge, and we like LERP. It, it's a, like I said, it's more challenging than Trooper. Yeah, it's it's kind of like the one that if you're gonna win, that's the one you want. That's the trophy you want on the wall. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Um, Austin asked if you guys have any sort of a custom turret on your scopes, or do you guys use a uh, dope card and a normal turret? Well, combo of um, each match is a little bit different, but uh, the um, our, our first for sure we use an arm board, um, and then we've got our, uh, you know, and then with our dope on it. So for our ranges, um, we use the Raptor, and it it get, it spits out a um, our dope for us um, when we're using that. Um, the turrets it kind of just depends on. Um, no. Oh, nice. Even got a key at the bottom, too. I was about to ask you what your wind speeds are, but you have that written down. Yeah, it's a five, a five mile an hour from either direction. So it gives you something to go off of. And do you guys carry each other's dope as well? Yeah. Yeah. We yeah. Do. That's what I figured. I, I noticed a lot of the, the teams that have critically thought about it realize the advantages of that. So this way, you know, if somebody's down there hammering targets and you're ranging, you instead of saying, "Oh, it's 500," and they're like, "Okay, my 500," you say, "Dial 1.2, send it," or whatever yeah. it may be. You know what's nice about even if you got a cartridge that's similar, um, you know, the first 600 yards for your secondary, it's going to be close to what your dope is, yeah. um, and so that makes it pretty efficient as well. You can just read off what your dope is to them, and um, most targets, I mean, that's that's the shooter's judgment. Um, on elevation, you usually have plenty of elevation. It's usually a wind call. That is true. Like those, uh, there's a stage with rulers out there, you know, like 
12 or so inches tall and maybe three inches yeah. wide if we're being generous. They always, yeah. they always make me shoot the rulers, too. I don't know what that's about. <laughs> that's not very nice. Rulers and the prairie dogs, right? Rulers, yeah. rulers and prairie dogs, yeah. Yeah. But you got a little guy. I got a little guy. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I got baby gun. So what would what advice would you guys give someone wanting to start doing this type of match? Oh, he's got it written down. Hold on. Check my notes. Check my notes. Uh, so one of the big things when we started just research, uh, like your guys' podcast. Uh, there we go. Best advice ever. Guys, that's it, right? <laughs> Best advice ever. Uh, but ser- in all seriousness, it is because those, those are the guys have gone out and done it and so have some clue about what's required and what works for them. Now, that may not work for every team, of course. Uh, our system won't necessarily do the same. But uh, do your research, figure out. Um, we shot Trooper when we first started, uh, mostly because I wanted, I really wanted to do some kind of rucking and, you know, physical exertion there. Um, the LERP, I, we maybe still be shooting it. I don't know. Um, it would have been tough. Uh, even in Trooper, um, you know, I had blisters on my feet and all that from the first go. And uh, so that was, I think, the, the, a good call. So I would say either shoot Mac or Trooper when you first start. Uh, get, a, get a feel for it. Don't get discouraged. Know that it's not PRS. It's not a, they're not cleanable stages. So, you know, a really good score at the end of all of it is a 50%. So, um, just kind of knowing a few of those things, and you really gain that from the podcast, uh, from blogs. We we would read blogs. We so when we go to North Carolina, it's a 13-hour drive. So uh, Caleb won't let me drive. So uh, I do the reading. So and then he taught me how to read properly. So anyway, we go through that. There is commas and periods when you're uh, reading. I can't, I, I can't make it a full run-on I'm sentence. Like, I said, time. do you read like this to your kids? I mean, like the storybook. Is this how you read to the kids? Period. <laughs> so storybook reading has gotten better at my house. And, uh, so we'll do that. We'll do a bunch, you know, on the road. While we're on the road, we like just look up. So like Sean and Greg, keep going back. Uh, Sean's re- written several blogs that we've read through that are really good and um, doing that having equipment that's really reliable uh, just not don't be pushing some cartridge to the utmost degree on the edge of popping primers you want uh, something that uh, if it gets wet if it gets dirty it's going to feed it's going to work through the through the grit and grime and and don't be afraid to get it dirty uh, my gun, I haven't even cleaned it. I don't think I cleaned it from North Carolina. It just kind of stays in a state of dirtiness. So uh, just knowing that your stuff's going to work and, and rely, uh, have, uh, you know, uh, confidence in your equipment. And then uh, past that, just going out and practicing with your partner, actually putting rounds down range, watch some of the videos you guys put up. And if you have a space to do it, uh, Caleb and I have done uh, 22s. If we, I've got a little range right at my house. And we'll do the same stages, but with 22, so a lot closer range. Uh, so, you know, a 300-yard shot can be primary shots and then 100-yard and in or secondary shots. And so we, we do all that. Work with all your gear, the gear you're actually going to use. Uh, that's just some of it. Just keep a good positive mental attitude the whole time. And that can be tough. But, uh, you know, knowing there's a, that there's a light at the end of the tunnel, I guess. That is all great advice. You know, I'd say it's, uh, you know, have a good range finder. That's important and good dope. I mean, so when you're out shooting and you're like, man, you're you're way off, you know, and you're shooting out from the field at 800 yards and it takes 100 yards behind it. It's hard to tell, boy, that was left or right, or, you know, especially for me. So get some good dope out distance and so you know that it was one um and not your elevation so i mean so, that's like the first one so out to distance how far out do you guys write your dope well i think um we run it out on our kestrel 1200 yards 
Yeah, and I, mine says twelve fifty. Yeah, and mine I go out to eight fifty ish. That's kind of like that's the furthest you ever shoot at Mammoth. So uh, Vortex is always six fifty and in for six, secondary. Secondary. Yeah. So, secondary. Uh, I think we had it twelve hundred. I don't think we've engaged the target over eleven hundred. Yeah, and I, yeah. I mean yeah. I'll I'll plank around at a thousand with my two twenty three, but uh, really if you can hit something two three MOA out at 850 with your 223 you know you'll be or a 308 for that matter for secondary you know, we've always shot the same i've always been secondary he's always been primary and that just that's always worked for us and um so we've never really changed that at all i bought up that question because in editing all this video i stumbled upon a funny quote of okay in the tree line at 1125 and then the response to that was, oh, crap, I don't have that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They did no, get a second round impact, though. They, they, yeah. they, they guessed good, <laughs> sent one, made a little adjustment, and, and we're on. So good, uh -huh. good for them. But Oh, yeah, you learn. You'll write it out to at least 1125 next time. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe they'll go all the way to 12. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I think I did a 1,200 for Mammoth. Yeah. 1,200, yeah. 12, yeah. The, uh, the only other thing I would probably add is also, and I saw it this weekend with young guns, uh, Evan and uh, Barrett uh, were both, and I know Evan Craig uh, from shooting at other matches. He's a Missouri local here, but their, their packs were too heavy and that will tear you up. So it, you, it's amazing. You're like, I need this and I need this and I need this. And it's like, well, no, you don't. You just need the absolute bare essentials to get by. So, yeah, I always try and like lerp. I don't want to be over 65 pounds with everything on. And um, for trooper, um, you know, 40 to 50 pounds. I think I was right around 50 for this one. Uh, so, I've always trained for 65. I really don't change too much between the two divisions. It's nice being able to restock your ammo at the end of the night. So, you always, you know, you're not worrying about running out of ammo. But other than that, the gun's the same, my pack's the same. I don't, trying to just like stay with all the same stuff, I think is important. So if, if we were to shoot Mac, I'd probably just shoot all the same stuff again. I wouldn't go get a heavy barrel or I wouldn't run a heavier game changer. I'd just still shoot the same stuff. So in all of your evolution of what you, what you pack, is there one item that was really hard for you guys to say like, okay, we really don't need this and finally take it out of the pack after a long period of time or did. Oh, well, the good one was mammoth. The first year we shot mammoth, we, we were in the truck driving there and talking back and forth about the tripod. And we're, and we were alert. Yeah, we were alert. So this is the first year we ever shot the tough man division so could, man, yeah. yeah so no restocking no restocking. yeah so this is the very first time we ever shot that division and so i was like the tripod's four and a quarter pounds and i said so our our goals are always number one have fun number two make the rucks because if you don't make the rucks your points don't count and then number three is hit steel targets so you've got to go in that or at least we we have to go in that order that's just required you know good mental attitude having fun uh so making the rucks was really important and i had to carry the tripod i was the one that was putting it on my back and so we ended up that heavy four yeah, pounds. Four, yeah, four, yeah yeah and so that was one that we ended up not taking the tripod on mammoth and our very first stage our very first stage was a tripod stage so <laughs> um anyway that we could have gotten more points on that one. Yeah. But so it, it turned out that? okay. You need to get the ruck tripod. That's what I took to Mammoth. And it's like two. Uh, I took the ball head off. I like I was like, nope, I'll just slap a bag, my get fill, get light bag on it and do it that way. So I took the ball head off. So I mean it was like two and a quarter, maybe two. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yep. That's a good I've, idea. I've kind of gotten addicted to my really right stuff with an anvil 30 on it. That's kind of just the tripod to shoot for me. So yeah. that is definitely a nice. I love tripod. the anvil. Yeah. That's what I have on my PRS tripod. But I knew I couldn't carry four and a half pounds. I was like, there's. You no know, it all adds up. It does. Quick, dude. Quick. So, what, Jennifer, what did your pack weigh? 55. 
Well, my pack, my clothes, everything. If I went from naked to everything, it was 54 pounds. Yeah. Oh, that's not bad. That's good. Though. Yeah, that's I'm, pretty good for, for tough man. It's so hard. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Was, yeah. See, I actually, I'll be honest with you. I convinced them in the beginning. I said, here's the deal. It says on the internet, you're not supposed to carry more than about 25% of your body weight. Well, he weighs more than me. Yeah, so, so I got to carry more. I made him carry more weight. <laughs> it was, I mean, I'm kind of the team leader, yeah. but, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so it worked out well for me. Yeah, we, we, <laughs> split, we split it up even. <laughs> I like that idea. Yeah, I was yeah. definitely carrying more than 25% of my body weight. That's for sure. <laughs> Yo, you, yeah, oh, yeah, you will uh, bench. I mean, you quickly add all the tripods and stuff, yeah. but I think we're, I, both of us now are probably 35 percent. i mean it's yeah pretty, it's pretty i mean everything you add it just keeps on, keeps it's, on going. it's really it's hard to do it with what we carry to do it and not be at 63 to 65 yeah for a, a lower division loadout yeah something else so what matches are y'all planning to shoot in the next year and what goals do y'all have I don't honestly. We'll probably I'll probably do some local matches. Um, so we want to win. Uh, would like to you know win the uh, Vortex Championship down there in Texas, of course. Um, we'll probably be shoot Lerp more than likely. Um, and then other than that, uh, I get my kids out shooting twenty uh, twos at some of the local matches. Um, is kind of my goal for the year. Um, and so other than that, we might, I might shoot a local club series, but probably between now and then a lot of 22 matches and, and work. So, yeah, that's, I'm kind of on the same boat. I run the, uh, most rimfire. I'm the director of that series here in Missouri. So, um, we've got six ranges that participate in that. So we've got, uh, 20 or 25, I think matches through the season. So. Um, I always like taking my boys to that, and so that's more. I'll shoot it, but I really like focusing on them and letting them uh, get involved in it, and and, uh, and so that's probably what, where I'll be, 22s for the most part, and we'll practice. Um, it'll probably be practicing is what it'll be whenever we can get together. Got to get ready for Texas. That's right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we don't want to get lackadaisy right now. All right, so here, here's a question for a rimfire shooter. If there was a rimfire sniper challenge, would you shoot it? Oh, yeah, well, I would. Hopefully, Caleb would come Squirrel along. Squirrel guns. Squirrel guns. Yes. <laughs> I, I yeah, love shoot my rimfire. So. Yep. Yep. And the I, was actually, was lighter. I was actually uh, out right before this podcast. I went out and shot about 50 rounds through my voodoo just to. Uh, keep brushed up that is awesome the, the 22s are fun and they'd be lighter <laughs> yeah <laughs> they'd yeah. be much lighter especially with <laughs> ammo loadout yeah. you guys need to start one of those let's say i i run a uh, an nrl 22 series down here but uh that would be awesome to do a rim fire sniper challenge oh yeah well you find out about it, let me know all right that'd be fun greg are there any lives i should check that i have not been doing a good job at that i believe we are good all right well, i think we can wind it down to shout outs we normally start with you so go ahead all right we will start off with GSL suppressors, which I will definitely be running in our Rimfire Sniper Challenge because they are super quiet on Rimfires. <laughs> uh, shooters and Sharpshooters in Augusta, our local indoor and outdoor ranges here. Uh, PDC Custom, the most beautiful rifle chassis known to man. They're available in lime, green, and normal human colors. Shooters World Powder, which when I bust out that center fire like I will be doing again hopefully soon, um, that's what I load up with that. Hunter's HD Gold. There's the, oop, there it is. Super awesome batter back there. Um, I'm blind as a bat and I feel a lot less blind with those. Um, fix it six, just kind of, I, I love them. They're, they're so simple, so easy. And you can fix all your stuff. If you need a discount code, hit me up. 
and Bortec because I realized halfway through this podcast that I need to I need to clean this thing before my match I'm running this weekend. So yeah. <laughs> All right. How about Caleb and Dave? Y'all got any shout outs? Well, my biggest shout out would be my wife and kids. Uh, my wife puts up with my addiction to shooting and hanging out with Caleb. So um, thank you, Natasha. And I got four, four kids, two boys, two girls. And uh, I did have one thing, this right here. When, this is probably a requirement if you go have something. Um, my little girl, Carla, she always drives me up. Love you, Dad. So it's a little note. I carry with me in my I bring her with me. Keeps me going. So uh, just my family. I love them to death and, and really appreciate them. That's awesome. Well, geez, that's a hard one. That's a hard one to follow up, huh? <laughs> I was about Caleb, to say, Caleb, Caleb, no Caleb. pressure. But if you don't no, mention uh, your uh, life, you're uh, in the well, doghouse. No. <laughs> yeah, you you know, I mean, to all the shooters, I mean, our family has a great deal of importance in doing that. We're gone for, you know, a few days at a time doing this. And, and like I said, we're always hanging out. So most definitely my wife and, and kids, too. Um, they enjoy it. We have fun. But, too, to, you know, we've got some great uh, people we work with, like Hunts Long Range. Um, he does all of our rifles and, our, and does our barrels and uh, does a great job. Um, any questions he's very knowledgeable and professional um, like Ron Williams with Swarovski uh, they're always you know the new the new scopes he's like hey come check these out and uh, it's always great to deal with customer support's great um, um, so we have a lot of and then who else do we have um, well that'd be you know sorry if I've, I've missed anybody else but Tyler Kemp to MK Machining um, he does some work for us on our throw levers and magazines and uh, a variety of different stuff, but, uh, you know, really this whole sport is great and all the people that sponsor it, uh, Vortex even, uh, they do, I mean, just, just being able to foot the bill for this and putting prizes on the table. So anybody, um, in the Vortex series, uh, that is pushing it, thank you very much. And we appreciate it. And that draws in shooters and it gets us gear that uh, we may not have purchased, uh, previously or we wanted and, and it's there. Um, so it's, a, it's kind of incentive to compete. So. We really appreciate it. And thank you guys too for um, having us on uh, and the podcast that we've been able to learn from. So we appreciate you guys as well. Good. Even the uh, Stop the Bleed class. That was very good, Jennifer. Oh, yeah. Thank you. I enjoy doing that. Those are fun. Yeah. Those are fun. Yeah, I injured my finger on Sunday at the awards thing and everybody was like, we know how to put a tourniquet on. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Maybe like, not for I, that. Yeah. I think we're okay. Band aid will probably probably get it, but <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, like I'd like to keep my finger. <laughs> yeah, really. Don't think a tourniquet will fit on that. Yeah. But well, I just want to shout y'all out for coming on the show and spending what two hours of your Tuesday night. I know y'all just got back in town. Um, of course, I guess y'all didn't have very far to go, but y'all shot the match all weekend and took time away from family for that and then to come back, you know, two days later as the winners and do the show again. I know that takes time away from your family. So thank them for me, for you coming on. And I appreciate y'all spending your evening with us. And with that, I think it'll be a wrap for episode 372. And we will see y'all next week. Awesome. Right. Thank you. We'll see you. <laughs>